Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, from whom we come, and unto whom our spirits return, you, Lord, have been our dwelling place in all generations. You are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Grant us your blessing in this hour, and enable us to so put our trust in you, that our spirits may grow calm and our hearts be comforted. Lift our eyes beyond the shadows of earth, and help us to see the light of eternity. And so may we find grace and strength for this and every time of need, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have gathered here this afternoon to remember and to give thanks for the life of Pauline Davna, who was born on November 8, 1921, here in Barnesville, and who returned to the Lord on Friday, January 1st, 2021, at the age of 99, having lived a long, full, useful life. As I said, we're here to remember and to give thanks for her life. We're here today also to find comfort and strength from a kind and loving Heavenly Father who has promised to be with us through every situation of life. And God's Word gives us comfort for times like these. In Psalm 90, it says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you mortals. For you a thousand years are as a passing day, as brief as a few night hours. Seventy years are given to us. Some even live to eighty or ninety-nine. But even the best years are filled with pain and trouble. Soon they disappear and we fly away. Teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. Let us, your servants, see your work again. Let our children see your glory. And may the Lord, our God, show us his approval. I love the words of the Apostle Paul, Romans, the eighth chapter. He says, in my opinion, whatever we may have to go through now is less than nothing compared with the magnificent future that God has in store for us. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. What can we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since God did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't God who gave us Christ also give us everything else? Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us? If we have trouble or calamity, or are persecuted, or are hungry, or cold, or in danger, or threatened with death? No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from his love. Death can't, and life can't. The angels can't, and the demons can't. Our fears for today, our worries about tomorrow, and even the powers of hell cannot keep God's love away. Whether we are high above the sky or in the deepest ocean, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then finally, let's hear these words from our Lord himself. On the night before he gave his life for us, he said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go 
and prepare a place for you. I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. In Philippians 1.21, the Apostle Paul declared, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Paul loved life, he loved his friends, but he knew it was better to die and be with the Lord. Pauline, too, I'm sure, felt that it was better <coughs> to lay aside the burden of, of illness, to find that sorely needed rest and refreshment that only heaven can give. And while her death brings sorrow to us here today, it has brought victory to her. Because to live in and for Jesus Christ is to conquer death and to experience all that, all that heaven affords. Pauline gave her life in service to Christ through her daily work, through, through teaching music to so many students over the years, and th through her church by being the pianist for some 60 years and filling the sanctuary with her beautiful music. She was a constant witness to the saving power of Christ through her words, through her character, her deeds. And so, and so death for her is indeed gain. And death is always gain for a Christian. Let me list at least two of the many reasons why this is so. Death ends the limitations of this life. And it sets us free to serve God in a perfect body and mind, unhindered for eternity. Uh, a pastor, Charles Kingsley, suggests that death is gained when it means the end of sorrow, terminates all the diseases of our body, the errors of our minds, the imperfections of the present, and unites us with the society of the just made perfect, and gives us the honor of serving God without weariness or end. We Christians, we look forward to the resurrection of the body that, that God will give us. And in 1 Corinthians 15, the Apostle Paul strains to give us a description of this perfection of this body. But in the end, we who trust in Christ look to the resurrected body of Christ as an example of the body that we will have. And, and so we accept his wonderful promise as our hope. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And that's why a Christian, and only a Christian, can say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Bruce Dunn was a well-known pastor. He was a speaker to a large radio audience and he says in one of his writings that he believes God wants us to be a little, a little homesick for heaven. He doesn't want us to sit too tight in this world. He says that the death, sorrow, and the pains of the body and heart while on earth can all be contributing factors in making heaven more wonderful for us. And he says naturally young people are going to want to experience more of life here on earth than and even older people will want to stay at home if, if everything's going great and the, the family's healthy and the bills are paid and the kids are behaving themselves. But the tears and the hurts of life are earthly reminders that heaven is our real home. C.S. Lewis has said, Our Heavenly Father refreshes us on our journey through life with some pleasant ends but he will not allow us to mistake any of them for home. No, our home is in heaven. And 
but death ends the limitations of this life. And death is gained also because it makes us part of the heavenly choir where we enjoy God and sing his praises evermore. The book of Revelation speaks of the worship and the praise the people will render for eternity. And John, the, the writer of Revelation, says the voices will cry, Praise our God and all you his servants. And the great multitude of believers will sing, Hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigns. And I'm sure that this would please Pauline, who faithfully and skillfully played the piano and made music to the glory of God for so many years at First Church in Barnesville. You know, Christianity, above all religions, has been a religion of music and song. A Roman emperor of an Asian, Asian province wrote the emperor to describe the group of Christians that he had found. And the most striking thing that he could say about them was, was their life of joy and praise. They meet at dawn, he says, to sing a hymn of praise unto Christ as unto God. And when the noted atheist Robert Ingersoll was buried, this notice was posted for his funeral. There will be no music. That's appropriate. For apart from Christ, apart from faith in him, what, what is there to be joyful about? What is there to sing about? There's no reason to sing when we die. But if we are Christians, we can sing in life and we can sing in death. Jesus brought life and immortality to life when he came into our world and he gave believers a song of joy and victory to sing forever. I like how the poet describes it this way. Before the music started, the world, brokenhearted, was dreamlessly passing the long, empty days. But then, then a dark, lonely hillside was spangled with light. The poet is talking about the resurrection. A dark, lonely hillside was spangled with light, and music burst into the night. A new word, with a capital W, he means Christ. A new word was spoken, and the chords that were broken wove gently together to make a new song. It was more than a carol to greet the new morning. It was the source of all music. That's God's love for you and me in Christ. Through his death and resurrection, Christ makes new life available to us all, but it is ours only if we believe in him and live for him. You know, Pauline knows the full truth of that now. She believed in Jesus, and she served him faithfully in the church for so many years, and she did that by bringing everyone who heard her music a little closer to God. You know, Billy Graham used to say that when he got to heaven, he would be out of work. No more need for preaching. And But he said his music people, uh, George Beverly Shea, Cliff Barrows, they would still be fully employed. They would be making music in heaven forever. I guess that means I'm going to be out of work, too, when I get there. But you know, Pauline won't be. Pauline will be forever playing wonderful, beautiful music to the glory of God. And I can't wait to hear her play. Everyone who has heard her tell, tells me how wonderful she was. And I close with this story. As the missionary Richard Nill lay dying, he would sing hymns, for he found in them the comfort and the assurance that he would need to, to cross the River Jordan. Toward the end, he, he called to his daughter, and he said, I, I cannot sing. Sing for me my favorite hymn. And so she, she sang to him on his deathbed these words from the great hymn, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, and I'm sure Pauline played it many, many times. Verse 3, 
When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside. Death of death and hell's destruction, land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever sing to thee. Pauline is now forever playing his praises in God's heavenly choir. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask her son-in-law, Mike Stevens, to come and share. I'm going to try to get through a family note that uh, has been written about Pauline. After hearing a pro-life ban, pardon the interruption with me, but Van's going to finish this up after I'm done, so he'll be back on course. James Taggart's a retired Methodist preacher, and he's married to Pauline's niece. And that explains her. I'm reading his words here. He was unable to make it due to some health concerns. So. Here we go. I became a member of Aunt Polly's family when I married her niece, Jackie. From that time on, I joined with Jackie in celebrating every Thanksgiving in Barnesville until Aunt Polly came down ill in her early 90s and came to live at Emerald Point. Spending Thanksgiving together was a Mayberry family tradition with everyone gathered around the table in Aunt Polly's dining room for the blessing. The food was served buffet style with each one taking their plate to find a spot to sit wherever they could in either the dining room, TV room, or living room, or also the steps going upstairs. Now, if you've ever been in that house, you'll realize it's not that large, and we're talking 30 people on the average. That's pretty impressive. I especially enjoyed a piece of Aunt Polly's lemon meringue pie. After dinner, the ladies gathered in the living room for their gift exchange while we men talked elsewhere and watched a football game on TV. When I retired from preaching and pastoring churches in 2005, I was asked to be one of the three preachers in the Ashbury Greater Parish. Every third Sunday, I preached at Piedmont, which was only 20 miles from Barnesville. So on that third Sunday, Jackie and I made it our habit to visit Aunt Polly and Paul. He left me out, but that's okay. As we greeted the people of Piedmont after church, one of the ladies would always ask, are you going to Auntie's today? We are grateful for these Sunday visits to Aunt Polly's home and then later to her room in Emerald Point. Some Sundays Aunt Polly and Paula would have us for dinner at the house, or at other times we would have lunch at Wendy's or Fairyland. Everybody can attest to this. We loved the fries and Sundays at Fairyland. Aunt Polly would share with us about her growing up days, her time spent with her husband, Uncle Bill, her experiences at Oberlin College School of Music, and the great time spent staying with Uncle Clarence and Aunt Lucille, and lots of times playing scramble with her grandma. She also talked of her experience as a longtime piano teacher and as pianist for Barnesville's United Methodist Church for over 60 years. Her years of service on the public Barnesville Library Board of Trustees. She and Paula also talked about Paula's work experience at Barnesville Hospital, Paula directing the church choir and the handbell choir with Aunt Polly being the accompanist. She, of course, would talk about family, her sister Betty and brother Don, a family tradition there. Aunt Betty lived to be late 80s, Uncle Don made it to 92, so her being 99, I guess that was uh, just good for all of us. She would also always mention her daughter Kathy and his, Kathy's husband Gary, grandchildren Jenny and Eric, and great grandchildren Kendall, Evan, and Caitlin. All of those people certainly here in spirit today because of different health concerns they weren't able to attend, but uh, we can feel their presence. I also remember seeing many of Aunt Polly's cross stitched pictures which were displayed all over her house. Jackie and I still have one of her cross stitched clocks. Try saying that, cross-stitched clocks, setting on a shelf in our home, which we see daily. Aunt Polly always seemed to have a positive outlook about everything, in spite of having lost a child early in her marriage and then losing her husband unexpectedly in 1979. Jackie and I thank God for Aunt Polly's life, for the blessing of having known her, her love for us, and being members of her family. We love you, Aunt Polly, and we will greatly miss you. Sincerely, Jim Taggart. 
Well, I connected with this group a lot later than Jim did, and I can feel her presence from day one till right up to this minute. I knocked on the door at Paula and Pauline's house November of 2012. And the two houses there on Park Street look a lot alike. I wasn't 100% sure I was at the right house. I knocked on the door. Pauline answered the door. She didn't know me from a lampshade. And I asked if Paula was home. And she started to go over to the stairway to let Paula know she had a visitor. She was about halfway there. She turned back and looked at me. Can I tell her who's calling, please? <laughs> so she was already protecting her daughter from that point on. And as Paula and I sort of started to date on a regular basis, I spent a lot of evenings out there with the two of them. And I was there to see Paula, but Pauline made sure I came back pretty regularly. As about every evening I was there, there would be a plate of homemade peanut butter cookies that she'd made that day to encourage me to keep coming back. <laughs> well, you've all heard good things about her. You all had a good feeling for her or you wouldn't be here today. So I appreciate the opportunity to speak on the family's behalf. And we'll turn it back over to a pro. Pam. Shall we pray? Gracious and wonderful Heavenly Father, God of all comfort and, and love and grace, we come to you in these, these closing moments and we thank you so much for the life of Pauline, long life, useful life, a life that brought glory to you. We just entrust her to your loving care until that great day that we are all united together in your wonderful kingdom. Keep us all safe. Keep us close to you. We pray through Christ our Savior. Amen. And now may the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and keep you always. Amen.